Hello and welcome again to the Skill Work Forum. We gather on, on these podcasts and talk about trends and issues and challenges surrounding the skill trades. My name is Tim. I'm always joined with my partner here, Brett. And today we're going to talk about really trying to dispel some maybe misperceptions or myths surrounding the travel staffing model, which is, you know, if you had to kind of put a put a moniker on what we do, our business, it's a travel staffing model. That's what we follow here at Skillwork. So we want to take a look at some of the myths, maybe some misperceptions or clarify some thoughts surrounding the model that, that we adhere to. And we'll also look at some of the other models so you can maybe get an understanding about what we're talking about here. So we'll jump right in and look at the very first one is really cost. And the one we, we, we often have to try to dispel or at least try to help you understand is this idea that it's too expensive. One thing we'll say about that is that the fact of the matter is that anytime you outsource a project or a service, whether it be mowing your yard or getting your taxes done or getting a haircut or whatever it happens to be, if you choose to outsource something, there's a cost. But along with that cost, there should be something coming in return. So value. So I think you always have to look in terms of when I'm expensing something, when I'm when I'm investing in something, am I getting value out of that? And staffing is the same thing. When you fill your labor needs, uh, no matter what it is, especially in the skilled trade space, you know that there is a cost to that and there's a cost to any model that you pursue. So you got to ask yourself, why should I spend the money? Does the value justify the cost? So that's the first one, Brett. And what about that? What about that? Well, that, yeah, I mean, no doubt about it. I mean, like you said, it's, you know, anytime you, any service that we go out and get, you know, it's, it's really come down, you, you, you know, you're really never upset about what you spend if you felt like you got what you wanted, you know, you know, you know, when my mom used to cut my hair, it was cheap, you know, <laughs> I, I don't think she watches this podcast, but I don't know how good it was. <laughs> so, and so, but uh, the, uh, maybe she does watch you it. You better call her right after. <laughs> it was a great haircut. And so, um, you know, we had, I had three brothers, so we, we were all going to the barber. You know, as Tim said, you know, you know, first let's to kind of, let's, let's unpack for just for a minute here, you know, what are the other options? So a travel staffing model is an option you know, to fill your talent needs. In our, our case specifically, you know, the skilled trades talent needs, but the, the model is used in other space too. We'll talk about that a little bit. But the first one, the obvious one is is internal recruiting. You, you, you know, one of the things that we've seen a lot in the last 10 years is, is HR has now become expanded into talent and recruiting internally and companies have chosen to invest because of the huge need to find talent in that. And so the the negative of that, um, the, the positive is obviously it's internal, you're doing it and hopefully you can find the talent. The negative, you've now created a fixed cost. You've increased you know, your your fixed overhead, you may or may not have a lot of success finding the talent. You know, the company that, that I was with prior to us starting this, you know, my manufacturing company, you know, we increased, we had, you know, significant increase in HR and it was debatable, you know, how much return we were really getting for that. Some areas they did pretty well, certain jobs, other areas not so well. Um, you know, there was a recent uh, leadership survey, I think Tim, we saw a while back that said that companies were expecting to increase their HR spend primarily through recruiting ta- recruiting and hiring people to do recruiting internally and stuff over a hundred percent with minimal expected impact to finding the talent. Right. Now, right. You and I, when we heard that, we both looked at each other and thought, why would you do that? Yeah. What, what, <laughs> does, what business decision do we make here that we're going to increase spending by a hundred percent, but expect no good result out of it? I, I think their, their, their hope was that they would at least stay even. You know, yeah. which which I'm not sure that that was what I would call value. So another thing is, what are your options? Internal recruiting, talent acquisition. Many of you guys out there are familiar with temporary or temp agencies. As staffing goes, it's probably the least expensive on the surface, but you also, generally speaking, find the least qualified uh, talent there. It works really well for general labor, uh, where, where there's not a lot of high skill or there's a lot of turnover. It's a numbers game. The problem, though, if it doesn't solve your, if it doesn't help you alleviate your talent concern, it's the most expensive cost because you've wasted cost. Mm-hmm. Now you're now you're throwing good money after bad. So temp agency, we know our business and skill work, many of our clients have worked with those type of agencies. 
Uh, it has not been a good experience for them. We're not, you know, blanket making a blanket statement against temporary agencies at all. But it's not designed for where our where we we focus, which is the skilled trade. So it's we often say, you know, you bring a knife to a gunfight yep. with, with that model. The other one is kind of a close cousin. It's the headhunter, or maybe a permanent search and hire model. You need a controls technician. You hire company A, they go out, find a handful of controls technician, you interview them, you hire one of them, and then you pay that company a fee for that. Really was not designed for skilled trades, more designed for, you know, white collar, uh, C-level suite, executive level one-off positions. It's not designed to be, um, you know, a more rapid turnover or bigger number uh, model. So uh, the cost is not insignificant. We, we've actually used this at times, and it's a pretty pretty big upfront cost with no guarantee on the back end. So that's a headhunter and the tip agency model. Yeah, so then the obvious, the other one is, is and, and I personally, and Tim does as well, you know, we have experience. You know, we always talk about those other, whether it's internal, whether it's a temp agency, whether it's a headhunter, they all have their place. They sure. were all created for certain you know opportunities and to solve certain problems the challenge is when you start to try to apply the wrong thing to to your your problem the travel staffing model is really when you want to narrow in and you need to find you know something specific in our case skilled trades and so you know the travel model on the surface when you know we're talking about cost here we'll unpack the model a little bit more here as we go through this but on the surface you know the travel model, you know, it does come with extra costs. You know, it, it, it is, you know, probably of these that we're talking about, temporary for sure, and your internal, you know, on the surface, it can appear to be be more expensive. But really, when you look at expense, as any business leader knows, you're really looking for that value. You're looking for that return on investment. I would suggest, and I, you know, I can tend to kind of nerd out on the numbers sometimes, but, you know, this these numbers that I'm going to share without getting too much in the weeds, you know, I would say are real life of comparing, say, a, a temp agency model or even some of your internal results to what a, what a really qualified travel model, as long as you're applying it to the right thing. To be quite honest with you, if you called us and said, hey, we, you know, we need you to find us something that we don't do, we wouldn't be the right fit either. And so, but... In our case, in the skilled trades, for example, you know, if you spend $1,000 on a particular model and you get a 20% return, or you can spend $1,400 and you get a 75% return, you know, the math in that tells you that while you spent more money up front for the, for the travel model in this case, the return overall, when you look at the results, it's a 60% decrease in cost. So you really got to look at not just what is yeah. the upfront cost, but what am I getting, you know, you know, for, for spending that money? And, and if you're not getting what you're, the result you need, then, you know, obviously it's not a good spend. And that goes for, I mean, think about it, put it in practical terms, you know, your haircut example. If, if I'm going down here to the, the school down the road here that's teaching people how to cut hair, and it's like five bucks, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I get, I'm the, I'm the, uh, I'm the again, the, uh, brought up all the jokes for my kids for the next two weeks. Maybe it's not so much value. Maybe spend a little extra and get a good one. So, you know, the second myth is that, or first one's too expensive. The second one is, hey, it's a bad experience. It's it's not going to work for us. It's just not going to work out. Maybe you had an experience that didn't work out right. And we just would always say, listen, make sure that you put in a square peg in a square hole. Make sure it's the right fit for you. And we can talk to you. No, no strings attached. And we'll tell you up front if we don't think we're a good solution for you. If it's the right problem for you, though, we'll be able to tell you that. And we try to be very upfront with that because, honestly, it's not good for us. If we're not able to, to solve your problem, it just invites more challenges for us as well. So staffing is the same. You know, there's three options right now. It's temp, there's headhunter, there's travel staffing. And, of course, then you have your own internal uh, hiring as well. And, you know, the, 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 other, the other thing, I, and we haven't mentioned it yet, but this idea that most people we talk to, they want to hire somebody that solved their problem permanently. You know, the idea of I want somebody to, I want to solve this problem once and move on. The fact of the matter is that this is going to be an ongoing challenge that you have. Permanent hires that come and work at your plant or your facility and stay there for 30, 40 years, that's really just an exception. 
anymore. That's just not the way things work. So the idea that you're going to have to embrace some other model to help augment your hiring is just a reality. So yeah, it 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 is. I mean, there's a there's a reason why staffing agencies overall, if you look at the overall scope of the staffing industry, which includes all these models that we're talking about, you know, just continues to grow, you know, at a significant level. It's you know, it's a multi-billion dollar industry at this point, and and so that is an indication that that finding talent finding even just labors is it's just hard right now and so so you are you know you know we're kind of unpacking these these bad experience with the idea that the myth of of one of the things that we when we started you know skill work you know you know four years ago or so one of the hardest things was was this idea that well you know i had a bad experience you know i, I used this agency to try to help me find you know maintenance technicians and it didn't work and so, and we would agree, yes, it didn't work because, you know, you, the, you, you applied the wrong thing to it. You know, the temp model, for example, it is designed, as we said a minute ago, you know, for general labor needs. And now, you know, we're, you know, I'm sure there, you know, uh, there'd be temp agencies that would want to argue with us about that and, and whatnot, but that is the reality. And it's okay. <laughs> you know, it's okay. We don't try to be what we're not. And, and, and they should be willing to be honest enough with their clients to say, you know, that's not really what we're great at. My experience, I used temp agencies considerably in the manufacturing world, and they, they were good at finding short or long-term needs that we needed uh, jobs that had minimal skills, seasonal help, um, you know, that was really where they shined. And, um, you know, we, you know, we made them, you know, we're willing to admit our mistakes. You know, we, we had a company that asked us if we could use our model. They were so desperate for general labor. They asked us if we could use our model to help them find that, we said, well, okay, we'll try. And, and for fairness, I said, we'll try. And and we failed, we, we, we couldn't do it. Our model did not apply properly to finding that type of, of work. We found them, but it was just traveling them and all the other things that go into what we do, it didn't work. Yeah. So. Again, we're not trying to say, you know, we're, we're the solution to all things. We know what we're good at, and, and I think a good temp agency knows what they're good at. Right. And you just got to apply the right places. Yeah, same thing with Headhunter, you know, and, and they're really good at going and finding a one-off, a one or two, two crucial key hire, you know, positions, uh, white collar, you know, let's say we need to find a new chief accountant or something like that or a CFO or or something like that, or a plant superintendent. Those sort of things are really good at. Um, they can do it very well. Can they find skilled trades? Yes, they can. But this is a great analogy. I think you came up with, Brett, that I can catch a baseball with a bucket, five-gallon bucket. Maybe half the time I could do that and pop fly. But the point is, I can catch a baseball with a bucket, but there's something better designed. A, a baseball glove is better designed. You don't see a shortstop using a bucket. Use the tool that's best designed for that right tool for the right job. And the headhunter, while they do what they do, great. And, and I've used them a lot and, and no problem with them whatsoever. For skilled trades, probably not the best model. Yeah, I think, you know, what we're, we're kind of hitting on, on here is this, that the travel staffing model, just like the temp agency model, just like the headhunter model, they were designed for a specific purpose. And when people say, well, we've had a bad experience using staffing to solve this problem, it's probably because you applied the wrong model to what you're looking for. And so travel staffing was designed to solve a very specific skilled needs. You know, the, the model was proven, to be honest, it wasn't on the skilled trades. We applied it to the skilled trades because we recognized that the other two, the temp and the headhunter, really weren't designed to solve the problem. And, and so the nursing industry is the one that proved the model. And, and then we, we used their model 
you know, and, and adapted it to, to the differences. But in a lot of ways, it, it is a very similar model. And, uh, but it's a targeted model, you know, and, and we would suggest or offer that, that if you become jaded on like, hey, I'm really hurting on finding high level maintenance technicians, control technicians, all anything that's in that skilled trade space, whether it's any space, doesn't have to just be manufacturing. That if you're if you've kind of become jaded, that hey, try that didn't work. Um, we would say at least take a look um, at at did you apply the right the right model to your problem? Yeah. So I think the final myth uh, that we've heard a lot about is that you know that there's a, just a lot because of what you talked about. There's a lack of understanding of which model to use, and so therefore you know lack of understanding leads to doubt and leads to you know I'm just not going to go that, down that path. So that doesn't really surprise us. And as a matter of fact, we believe that a part of what we do is, is a lot of education. And we have to make people aware of our model and the differences of it. And we and we welcome that. We, we invite that opportunity to step into that conversation because it is a newer model. And we are doing something new. And so we get that. And so the idea of us trying to alleviate your concerns or at least answer your questions. And I can always guarantee you one thing from us at Skill Work. You're going to get honesty. You're going to get integrity. It's part of who we are. It's one of our core values. Uh, and honoring God in everything we do, we want to do things with honesty and integrity. We'll be upfront with you always about that. Here are some of the things we hear when we engage in some of those conversations. So what, what are some things you're out there talking to our clients? More yeah, it's, it's kind of fun. You know, it's, um, you know, people, people will even... I understood it a lot when 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 our when the concept was just you know it was probably good that people were asking questions you know um, because it probably helped us develop what what then later became what we were able to implement and then and then utilize even to this day you know if, if we're just having general conversations or if I'm having general conversations with people there seems to be this 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 misconception why would why would people want to do that why why would why would somebody want to Travel around the country, work at different locations. You know, for some people, they just like, well, I, I don't understand why would why why can you find them and I can't find them? Kind of kind of a thing. And really, the only answer that I really have for it is the that you know we have a in a in a very large population. I think you know the population of America now is three hundred and twenty million or something like that. And so people like options. You know, I got a, a good. A good friend of mine that I worked with for a long time. He said, "He always said, you know, options are good, you know." Uh, and so, um, not everybody. It's not for everybody, but there is a there is a portion, just like there is in in the in the nursing industry that we just talked about. There's a portion, and not this isn't. We're not trying to convince everybody to become you know, a, uh, you know, a, a contingent worker, what they call a contingent worker, you know, which is somebody that, you know, supplements or is there on, on contract type thing. Right now in the dynamic of what you see and the need for to find talent and get it where you need it, the fact that, that for a lot of people, and, and we know this, you know, but it only takes a few percent to make a huge difference in, in helping companies right. get the talent that they need but there's a lot of people that, whether it's for the experience, whether it's for the travel, whether it's they're just they're a bit burnt out, whatever the case may be, for a certain portion of the population, they just they love the model and they embrace the model. And and perfect example, a much more proven. You know, we, we we keep kind of referring to the nursing because it's it's been out there. There's a lot more um, history of it. It's been in place for 30 plus years now. And, you know, travel nursing is now roughly 15 to 20 percent of the total nursing industry. And so it's made a significant impact on providing adequate care and supporting those local nurses. We're seeing we're early in this, but we're seeing the same trends yeah. in, in the skilled trade space. Yeah, I would just say to that point, anybody out there listening, next time you go to your doctor for your physical whatever, if you're not familiar with the travel nursing, just ask a casual question. Do you guys use travel nursing or travel medical folks here at all? And, you know, what's your experience with that? Just ask a question because they, they've embraced the model. And, you know, and, and, and I do that often just because I want to. And it's invariable. They absolutely know it or they'll go, yeah, like Sally over there. She's a travel nurse. And or I used to be. Or, yes, we've used them before. It's great. So so look into that. And the other thing that I, I think that 
that people question is this idea of, well, people aren't going to leave California and travel all the way to Maine, go all the way across the country, and you know how do you how are you going to make that work? And the the fact of the matter is, we we've, we've got enough people out there, enough experience to know that most people, uh, maybe we've had a few of those, but most of the average traveler is going to stay around three to five hundred miles of the, around where they're from. It allows them to go in and work and stay focused on the work, but to get home on a long weekend. So that's the travel model we're most used to. As a matter of fact, we kind of look for that regional. Are you regional? In some cases, some people want to go across country, but but that's 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 kind of a myth, a misperception that, that we want to support with some facts. Yeah, yeah, like you said, Tim. I think the the net, when you say travel, people assume far. Yeah, and and the reality is 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 that most most of the folks that we put in the field are, are probably you know less than 500 miles you, you know from 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 home you know so so it's just one of those misconceptions the other misconception is that we hear people say is they they think well okay that that makes sense for for young people millennials yeah yeah for the millennials that's cool you know they can travel they can do this they can do that they can gain all the experience the reality is 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 and i don't know i i would i would say this probably for honest this probably surprised tim and i when we were building the business as well and that we we had a lot of intention to really focus on the the vocational schools and and the young, the young, the millennials, because we knew yeah, they'll right. love this idea. Well, the reality is our average skill worker is 45 plus, you know, and the beauty of that is they come with experience. Yeah. And, and that's what our clients are looking for. And so we were, you know, pleasantly surprised over the years to find that that that's a reality. And, and I think it's just because depending, a lot of them are in a season of life that they're able to start to That's travel right. again. They're, yep. they're not building a family at that point in time. You know, they're looking for fresh opportunities. They welcome the opportunity. The number of, of, of our skill workers who uh, just the opportunity to share their talent and to help the next generation and and is something that they find a lot of value in. You know, as you know, Tim, you know, our second value next to honoring God is to bring value and respect back to the trades. And so... So that valuing the, these individuals and letting them use that talent and share it. And then obviously, you know, for some of them, it's just, you know, you know, there's a big demand right now and demand, you know, drives dollars. And so, you know, the opportunity, you know, to uh, maybe they're in a part of the country where if they're willing to go somewhere else, they, they can make more money. And so, better life. so, so yeah, so for some of these, <clears throat> these folks, so that is the reality. It's, it's, uh, we have, we have young folks, we welcome them. They're, they're smart, they're talented. Um, but overall, it, it's a, it's a, it's a little older demographic. Than, yeah. We were than, really, than what a lot of people think really surprised by that. And the other thing is you were saying that I think one of the myths that, that I've heard and used to hear, you know, more frequently, and I think it's still out there, is this idea that people's experience with temp and staff agencies, the perception was that the people that they got from those companies weren't taken care of very well. Mm. And because they weren't taken care of very well and they had no job security, that they were going to bounce at the first opportunity. Uh, because what they heard, even the great guys that would join from a temp agency, they would hear from them that they're basically not really supported and that they were concerned they were going to have a job, so they were on the, and made them more more liable to leave. So I can tell you this: I can't speak for other companies, but I can speak for ours. What Brett mentioned a core value of ours is respect and value to our skilled tradesmen. We take care of our employees; they're our employees. They're not a different. Another difference is these are our skill work employees. We treat them like the very best of our employees. They they are valued. We work hard to get them good wages to get them certification and training, take care of their travel needs and their families. These people come, they show up, and they know that they are cared for so they can focus on your job and your issue, and we have their back. There are people. Now, sometimes they choose to want to stay with you long-term, permanent placement. We manage that. You know, that's somewhere around you know 10 or 15% of our guys, give or take, will end up doing that. But some people like to stay with us. And what you're going to get from at least our travel staffing model is somebody that shows up that's well supported, that's not looking over their back or their shoulder for the next job, that's not gonna bounce the next opportunity. We're, we make sure that they're focused on staying there and working. So I just wanted to 
mm-hmm. kind of knock that myth down as well. So these are just a few of the misperceptions we wanted to go out there with today and talk to you about. And uh, We don't know if the travel staffing model is the best one for you, but we think for skilled trades, for the space we're working in, it is maybe the best solution for your shortage. And we believe that it's definitely worth you exploring. At a minimum, uh, take a look at the value of what you're spending right now versus what you're getting back. There may be some current frustration or past frustration over what you've experienced with staffing agencies, and it may not be the right fix for all of your problems. We're not saying that. But for some of your needs, a partner in a company uh, like ours, depending on which, which one of these models fits best with you, might be something to pursue. I know me and I know you, we make assumptions. And those assumptions become a reality, yep. and uh, reality is what makes and informs our decisions. So maybe maybe cha- challenging some of those assumptions is a good idea. Yep. No, I agree. So yeah, no, I think it's we we would just encourage you to. It's a challenging labor market. Um, it's very challenging to find the skilled talent that you need. Um, the the level of skills just continues to to increase with with automation and the different things that are going on, especially in the manufacturing space. And so, you know, uh, we would encourage you to reach out to us and and learn more about the the our model, the model, uh, the travel model. Um, you know, ours specifically in the skilled trade space. Yeah, and and again, as always, we appreciate the time you take to listen to this. Reach out to us at Skillwork. You can go to our website. There's always somebody here that's willing to talk to you, maybe answer your questions. We'll shoot you straight, be upfront with it. If we can help you, we'd love to do that. Love the opportunity to do that. Um, as always, we want to point out a couple of, uh, of, of things to you to consider. First of all, we have another podcast that, that we produce here called The Proud Skill Worker. It's awesome. It's the voice of the skill worker. We interview some of our guys and some of the people they work with out in the field and really just ask them straightforward and honest questions about what it's like to be a skilled tradesman and, and kind of their world. We encourage you to listen to that. Um, same places you can get our podcaster there. The other one is our guys at the Texas Boys Outdoors. We love these guys. Uh, They're on the Pursuit Channel. It's a hunting and fishing show designed to support disadvantaged first responders, police and firemen, military and veterans. They do a great job getting them out into the great outdoors, and we're proud to be a sponsor of them. So check them out. Until next time, Brett and I just say thanks very much. God bless your day, and uh, come back and listen to us again on on the Skill Work Forum. Thanks. Thanks.